Right on time, Mr. Jocelyn. Let's be ready to hop. Don't pull, Frankie. It's all whistle, wheel, and white smoke. It won't do you no harm if you keep wide of it. Bye, Frankie. We'll be thinking about you while we're kicking up our heels in the big city. It's farm business taking us to New York City, me to do it, and you to learn how it's done. I was just joking. Ain't a matter for joking. That hog is liable to Farrell before we get back. Hey, isn't that Rab Hurlbut over there in the khakis? Hey, Pa, Pa, here I am. Bet you didn't even recognize me. Oh, my. Boy, I'll bet you he's got more than one story to tell about all them goings on in Gay Prairie. And like as not lies, all of them. You'll be sure you lock up at night. Don't you open your door or your mouth. Any strangers coming by, there's thieves and murderers walking these hills pretending to be veterans. I read about them. Bart! Don't worry about us. We'll be fine. Bart! Well, kiss your ma goodbye. Yes, sir. We'll be back in a week's time. Goodbye, young'un. Come on, don't stand around dawdling and scuffling. You want to get left? none of ours. Come on, boy. We're going across the road to the store. Mr. Calicoon's going to give us a nice ride in his sea dad. You like that, won't you? to bring the word. You little greedy Gus and Jerry here are share and share alike. There. Going down to the lower pasture and start the cows up, Frankie. You bide here with your play. Ma, what's today? That it is what today is. No, it ain't, because Ray and Pa's to be come back on the Saturday, you said. And they are. It ain't over yet. It's still Saturday till that sun over there goes all the way down. And you can see the moon come up between them two conifers. The bottom of the evening to you, ma'am, which I presume is the opposite of the top of the morning and the only suitable greeting for this particular time of day. Evening. I hope I'm not trespassing on your domain, but I'm a stranger in these climbs and wouldn't know a public path from a private preserve. Twins Head Road. It ain't private. Are you aiming for Twins Head? Well, do you know the place, then? Well, I should. I was born and raised there, and it being only six miles away, well, then you'd know some of the folks there. I guess I would. A wartime buddy of mine may have, an old comrade in arms named a house, Albert House, a garage man, I believe. Well, I should. He's, he's my brother-in-law. 
You were in the war with Albert? Shoulder to shoulder at Vimy Ridge, we stood off the oncoming hordes. And there's more truth than poetry in that, ma'am. Six miles, you say. I was intending to sup tonight in Twins Head, but it was six miles left ahead of me. Well, you could come up to the house. It ain't much and it ain't fancy, but it'll get you by till morning. I have never stowed away such appetizing and delectable cousine. Well, what occurs to me, ma'am, is this. Why is there no hired hand roundabouts to do the moiling and the toiling while your husband's away? And leave these hands to do what, mister? Mm. Womanly things. They do that all year. This is the one week they get the feel of the soil around them. You think I give that week up for a hired hand? You have a great lot of the land, I see. Oh, this here land. It's the best, best farm in the valley. It's the best soil, best drainage, and best stock. You grow up here, did you? Well, I came here about 17 years ago when John Johnson married me. It's his farm. Uh, mister, you won't think me inhospitable, but I've got the milking to do and... Oh, say no more, ma'am. Say no more. I've dined most royally, conversed most eloquently, and enjoyed the rarest of delights. An hour's interlude with a woman of worth and wisdom. I'll abuse my welcome no longer, but before I go, give me leave to repay your kindness by the playing of a tune. It's called Kiss Me Again. And it's currently enjoying tremendous popularity in the cultural capitals of the world. Kiss me, kiss me again. Oh, my. What for you have been kissing him, Mom? Frankie, what are you doing down here this time of night? Because he plays so nice, you've been kissing him, Mom. What you talking about, for heaven's sakes? I ain't been kissing him or nobody. I heard you, Mom. You don't know what you heard. Now, you forget about all this nonsense and turn yourself around and get up the stairs and into your bed, hear me? But, Mom... Frankie. It was just a little tune, laddie. A little tune played on the mouth organ. Did you like it? I tell you what, Sonny. Why don't you see if you can play a little tune? Here. Take it up to bed with it. For me? Are you ought to... For you. Go on, take it. Keep him quiet till he drowses off again, and in the morning he'll have forgotten all his notions. I ain't so sure about that. I'm giving him something to remind him. The mind of a child, ma'am, it flits from this to that like a hummingbird in search of nectar. We'll see. Anyhow, it's getting by time that train was due at the cross, and don't take but 20 minutes to hear in the sea, Dan. Many, many thanks, ma'am. And until we meet again, fair lady, Oh, for goodness sakes. <laughs> Au revoir.
I wonder where you both gone to. Uh, how was the how was New York, John? Did you get all the business tended to? How'd you like it, Ray? Ain't nothing been going on around here. Nothing at all. I've been thinking. Now you're back. We can get them north started out to the west plowing. And then we can decide if we're going to change it to rye. Also, the pullets need weeding out. I guess I know what's to be done. Well, we better be thinking about ditching that waste piece before it freezes. A crocus come up the other morning. Cold weather ain't far away. Grab some more potatoes, sir. In old New York, in old New York. Dum, 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 Just dum. calm down, boy. Oh, well, I'm going to turn in. It's been a hard day. It's been a hard week. <laughs> pa, them aprons. What aprons you talking of? Oh, Ma, we bought you some aprons for a present. Why, that was real nice of you. But we must have left them on a the train. Well, it's the thinking that counts. What? I hope they didn't cost too much. Oh, they didn't hardly cost nothing, dime store aprons. Besides, they'd be halfway to Stillwater by this time, no matter how much they cost. You get the barn locked up and get to bed so he'd be up and down by four. Ray's had a hard day of it. I'll lock up. Where'd this thing come from? <laughs> Whose is this? It's Frankie's. Did you think it was mine? Where'd he get it? Why, he, uh... How's knowing where he got it going to get that barn locked up? I was only... Mom, Mom, I want that thing. It's mine. There you go and woke him up. Hand it over to me. It's your brother's and he's fretting for it. Frankie, why ain't you asleep? It's mine. I want it. Shh, shh, shh. Here it is. Your brother Ray saw it. Ray? I thought it was the man you was kissing. Frankie, I swear, I hear you ever say that to anybody at all. That foolishness about kissing. I'll have your pants down to your ankles, and I'll lay into you with a hairbrush. Now, you hear me? Oh, there, there, now, there. I wouldn't hurt you. Not for real, I wouldn't. But don't talk about that anymore, my darling. Because it's naughty, you hear? It's naughty. And it ain't true. Now you go to sleep, my precious. And just forget about it. Just forget all about it. I wonder what color the aprons was. Cider, 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 eaten a pie. Cider, cider, and eaten. Oh, Frankie, you think you could march down and tell the men folk to come up to their dinner? You bet I could. Oh, hold on a minute. Don't you want to leave that thing here with me? Just so you won't lose it down in the brush. No. All right, Pestia. Don't you go bothering them by wailing on it down there. Where's Ray and Frankie? They stopped a minute down at that tree house. Well, the dinner's ready. Well, then go shout them out for it.
Wife, I'm waiting on my dinner. And where is it you're going, young man? Going to bed. Night. Going to bed? All on his own? Well, I never. Maybe he's drawn up finally. And where are you aiming to go? Down to Calicoon's to cross him. See some life, that's where. Did your pa say so? I ain't asking him. Reckon you'll think of something to tell him if he does ask. Ray, you wait here. Let me smell your breath. You've been drinking. Ain't nothing your business. No, Ray, wait. Now you wait. You listen a minute to me. I know what's been ailing you here. You've been listening to what your brother says. And there ain't a word of truth in it. Now you hear that. And you believe it. I hear it. And believe it. I hear it. Pray we... Well, that's everything on the list, Mr. Joslin. Might as well settle up my bill as long as I'm here. Yes, sir. Wife was in a week or so ago on all that laying in supplies. Wasting money on a Jim Crack mouth organ for the boy. Said she bought a mouth organ here? Didn't say nothing. I see. Well, didn't she buy it here? Where else would she get it? Well? I'm sorry, Mr. Jackson. About what? Well, uh, about everything, I guess. What are you talking about, man? Well, we don't have no moth organs, Mr. Jocelyn, so we couldn't sell none. Well, then, she got us some... Who's buying all this beer? Your boy, Ray. When? Other night, when he was in. Uh, that's when we uh, heard about it. Who was he? And how long was he here with you on my farm? And what else did you give him besides kisses? But I never... John. Now, you tell me. You tell me, you hear? Well, there ain't nothing to tell you. I tell you what they're talking about down at the crossing. They don't know what they're talking of. Now, you tell me, then. You tell me what went on. They ain't nothing went on. What you've gone and done. And do you see what you've done? Harkening to foolishness, running to the store, gabbing lies. You see what you've gone and done? What I done? 
That's a good and that is. Now listen to a lot of you. You're just going on something Frankie took into his head. Well, I think it's come to a sad pass when you take for gospel what a baby his age has to say and won't hearken to a grown woman you've been living with for going on 18 years. Out of the minds of babes and sucklings, the book says. Now, you tell him the truth. You tell him what happened. Go on, tell him everything you've seen. Stop your crying. And I want the truth, mind you. Now, everything, or I'll put you in prison. something on his way. The dump? What in heaven for? Something. Well, you come set anyway. I'll wait. Well, what you got there? It's an empty pot. For the what? For the filling. Filling. You'll see. Fly water. Now, if so be it, you want to go on cooking for this family. You'll come and wash your hands. Come what? Come wash your hands. You want I should wash my hands in that? What for? You know what for. For washing away what you've done. There ain't nothing been done. Uh, how can you wash away something ain't been done? Then you won't. I, I can't. There it sits. It'll just sit there. Till hell freezes over. If it takes that long, so be it. Come, Ray, we'll take our dinner down to the crossing. Till hell freezes over, you hear me? Till hell freezes over. That's how long it'll sit there. Till hell freezes over. <laughs>
dear God. Dear God, how's it to end? Jocelyn. You're Albert Pease from Lower Falls. No, he ain't. You're wrong about that, lady. A couple of other things. We're more or less strangers on this side of the county. You're more or less strangers as how to act in female company, too. You ain't got no call to say how folks can act now, have you? Well, what the three of you want? We want you to know something. Now, we know what Jocelyn's done for this farm here, and we know what he stands for in this community. Sometimes outsiders can do more than neighbors can. Well, what you aiming to do? This has always been a God-fearing, law-abiding community. And it ain't gonna be winking at goings-on behind husbands' backs at this late date. Nor at the homes going to rack and ruin and men interfered with raising the harvest and the nation's crops. No stubborn, unholy... Unchristian! Unchristian goings-on! Now, a word to the wise is sufficient. Get along in the home, or get out of it. Reverend, I, I didn't know you was here. How to do? I'm pleased to see you. Oh, oh, will you take a cup of tea? I'm pleased to see you, Sister Jocelyn, I'm sure, as I was saying to Brother Jocelyn before you came in. I just dropped in going by. Well, I'm, I'm glad you did. Kettle'll be on in practically no time at all. I often drop in on one or another of my people's homes just to simply and without fuss. Kneel down in the family circle and talk to God as you talk with one of your neighbors. It seems to me there's no prayer and no cathedral so helpful, so curative, and so acceptable to our Father in heaven than that. Amen to that, Reverend. Might we pray? Sister? I, I never done a thing. It's all lies. I keep telling them. I keep telling them. And now I'm telling you, it's all lies. I never done a thing. You and God know the truth of that, sister, surely. But anyway, how about just talking it over with God? That's never harmed a living soul, not since the world was made. Our Heavenly Father, in your infinite mercy, a home torn asunder by sins of thought and sins of deed. A good woman turned bad behind her husband's back. Vouchsafe that whichever of us is in darkness. Teach us, O oh, great teacher. God bless you, wife. Hey, and begin all new as it was before, let it be again. The family loving and united, gathered around the table, in the sun of the day and the softness of the evening, talking to them about the fields, the sins, the fattening stock, and the love of one for the other, and all straight in the loving light of God again. Amen. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. There. There. That is for everything I may have done. Son.
There, Pa. There, Ma. Not on your life. And you won't? For what? For you double-crossed us. Sister, your husband and your son. Let them do what they're doing. They must have a reason for doing what they've done. But I ain't done nothing. Wife, you come here and wash away your sinning. Not till hell freezes over, I won't. <laughs> Sorry about this, John. I tell you that. How long is she gonna stay in Twin Set with you and that Hattie Uncle Albert? Well, uh, that is a kiddo. Uh... You know how long she's staying, boy. She already told us how long she's staying till hell froze over. That's how long she's staying. Now shut up about it. Yeah. Well, maybe we better get going. Albert. Yes, love. Yeah. Well, goodbye. Keep still. I'll get it, Hattie. Excuse me. I said you'd come to town, and I've been standing first on one foot, then on the other, waiting to come face to face with you. The merriest of Merry Christmases to you, ma'am, and things being the way they are, may I introduce myself properly. The name's Hedge, William Hedge. And you've been meandering through my thoughts ever since the night we met. Well, I'm Addie Joslin. Is this for me? It is, ma'am, it is, and I hope it suits you. And I hope you'll stay long amongst us, and I hope you'll do me the honor of taking supper with me tomorrow evening. Oh, I, uh, I don't know. Eat your supper, boy. It don't taste good. Don't matter none how it tastes, eat it. And you too eat. Think you want to be here all night? Nothing I'd like better. Is that so? You betcha it's so. Tell you one thing for sure, Ma ain't going to bed no half past seven or eight these nights in Twins Head. Not Ma. Just shut up about her. Well, shutting up don't change nothing. I wouldn't blame her if she never come home no more. Well, what for? She knows when she's well off. I'm seeing everybody and tending shop for Aunt Hattie in the hat store. And Aunt Hattie gives parties, too. You know what I heard down at the crossing? I heard that Aunt Hattie gave a party that Uncle Albert had every car from his garage out lying on the sidewalk just to take folks home. What do you think about that? Time to clean up these dishes and get the boy to bed. And you go there yourself as well. See that you're up and down by four. See you, Ma. Your Pa know you're here? No. You're gonna catch it if he finds out. No, that don't matter none to me. You look. 
look different. How do I look? I don't know. It's just different. Uh, Ma, you, you having a good time here? How's Frankie? He's crying a lot for you. How's the hay holding up? And the cows, any of them come in yet? How are the hens doing for eggs? Well, they're all all right. Must be mighty pretty up there now. Well, you wouldn't fancy it, Ma. I mean, the good times you're having here and, and down at the cross, and they're always talking about, about Aunt Hattie's parties and all the things. Yes, and... down at the cross, and they're always talking about something or other, ain't they? Ma, ain't you never coming home? It hardly ain't worth nothing at all anymore, the way... Your pa still got that light can waiting? Still waiting. Well, Ray, I... Well, well I better be getting on home. Paul. Well. Bye, Ma. Bye, Ray. That's your boy. My oldest. Missing you and wanting you to come home. Yes. The way you're wanting to go. Because the fancy gowns you're wearing and the latest hats and the newest hairdos, they don't cover up the real love in your heart. For the lowing of the herds and the whisper of the wind through the conifers and the sparkle of the sun on the field. It's still sitting there. It's sitting there. And as long as it's there, it's no different than a padlock on the door. Oh, I just woke up. See what you get for holding back, even for a minute. Even when there's no sin in the telling. If I'd just said, even before they got their hats off. Listen, let me tell you what happened tonight. Or when Ray saw the mouth organ and asked where it come from, I, I should have said right out, a man come by and gived it to Frankie after I give him some beat. But I didn't then. And I can't now. It's too late. It's not too late for me to tell what happened. Oh, you'd be called a liar for your pains. A man don't believe his own wife ain't about to believe a stranger, is he? Sometimes I wish I was that woman they say I am. Sometimes I wish I'd done what they said I'd done. And I'd be home now. Waiting for the spring plant and where I ought to be. But here I am. Stifling in four walls. Selling hats to women who never felt a callus on their hands. Doing penance for a sin I'd never done. For sin and there's forgiveness. But for not sinning, it's nothing but eternal damnation. If only I'd done it. If only I had done it. Stop that. That's 
the most heartless. Burn your bridges. You're talking about be hung for a wolf you out of your head well you said it yourself you're a fallen woman in everyone's eyes you can't go back there not with a lie can waiting why stay here why stifle why suffocate there's a wide wide world around us come with me to its far corners you're a handsome woman Eddie I'm a married woman. I took my vows when I married John Joslin, and I'm sticking by them. Sham. Hypocrisy. You're an unfaithful wife, and you know it. How dare you? You just admitted it. You wish you'd done what they said you'd done. You wanted to do what they said you did. I said that out of anger. And out of anger came the truth. And the truth is, a sin in thought is the same as a sin in deed. You want to be what they say you are? Oh, well, ma'am, William Hedge, at your service. And now, my dear. Don't do that. You mustn't. May I have the honor, Mrs. Joslyn, of driving you home? Uh... How long are we keeping this bucket of slops around here? You know for how long, boy. Well, I'm throwing it out right now. Keep your hands off of that. Boy, you wife on every little stuff. trunk in the morning. Stand still, boy. Well, wife, what brings you back here? I've come home. That's what. Look what I brought you, Frankie. Ma, you, you mean hell's froze over? It's froze over, Ray. I guess it did a long way back. When I didn't have the sense to recognize it. I was being too proud to realize it. Look. I'll show you. Everybody's satisfied now. Wife. Come on. Come on. That's a good girl, honey. That's my girl. All right. Seems to me there's a mighty clean enough to be done around here. Ray, get me my apron. I'll get a start on those dishes. John, you look to use a little filling out. Guess you've been living mighty high off the hog these last six months. I don't suppose anybody'd mind a mess of buckwheat cakes to go to bed on. No, ma'am. And first thing in the morning, we get to the spring planting. John, I've been thinking, maybe we ought to switch to barley in the third field. Any of the cows come in yet? <laughs> Seems to me it's time that Sally... Ray, will you get rid of that thing? There's one thing I can't stand is my kitchen all cluttered up with something that ain't got no use or business there. Yes, ma'am. You betcha. 